Coach Andersy, we have two of your senior captains tonight for Kent State Wrestling Talk, episode number two of season one. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. How are we doing? I was doing well. Living okay. the dream. Doing good. Living the dream. Okay. So we have the two bookends for you, Coach Andersy. Introduce your two guys here. We have Jake Ferry, our 125 pounder, and we have Jacob Cover. Our, our heavyweights, and they're both uh, seniors this year. Jake Ferry's a six-year guy. Jacob's uh, a fifth-year guy. So two guys on, you know, bottom end of the, the weight classes. Um, they are the official uh, hosts of the Jake and Jake semi-live show. <laughs> so I guess the first question right out of the gate, we'll come, we'll circle back around to it, but is the microphone real? Does it even work? <laughs> I mean, it, it is a real microphone, but we cut the cord. It does not work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whose idea was it, Coach Andersy? I, I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I came down to practice one day, and these two guys were interviewing people, and I heard the Jake and Jake show semi-live. I thought the, the, the funniest part was the semi-live part, and they, I don't think they used that in their official title. It was just the Jake and Jake show. I think I've added the semi live show because it just, it makes me laugh because, you know, no mic doing with the camera, a, a, a phone camera. And it's, you know, it's all just recorded and put together later on, but they call it the semi live show. So I like that. Yeah, actually, yeah, we're pretty sure you coined it the Jake and Jake show also. I did. I, uh, maybe people just started calling it that we, we just had to ask question of the week. It's semi live though. I mean, that means you record it and then you upload it. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, Probably within five minutes of shooting it is my guess. Yeah. The funny thing about it is I, I didn't even know about this. And we were in a head coach's meeting and uh, somewhere in there, the AD started talking about how much he liked the Jake and Jake show. And I had no, I go, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And they all kind of laughed and I went back to my office and uh, found out what they were doing and, and, and thought it was pretty good. So we've kind of combined it. We've added it to all our, um, social media, and they've done a real good job of getting it out on their own, but then we've added it to all the Kent State social media, so it's kind of turned into a fun little bit they've, they've been doing. My thing is, I caught, I looked, I walked uh, from the kitchen into the living room the other day, and I looked on my wife's phone. She's like, have you seen this? It's really funny. <laughs> I was like, wow, yeah, you don't laugh at a whole lot, so for you to think that's funny, and my wife liked it, so you guys are doing something right. You got my wife to laugh, so... Uh, I listen. I think my favorite bit so far is uh, trying the golden flash and then making the noise was pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good. It's good. But uh, we'll circle back around to that. But Coach Andersy, you're up first. Um, since you and I talked a couple of weeks ago, what has been going on? We're mid October. Uh, we are. The season has started. You guys are over a week into it. About a week into it now. What has changed since you and I talked from preseason to beginning of season now? We've just started official practices now. And, you know, it's kind of the grind period. It, last week we had uh, fall break. So it started on Thursday and we got a really big freshman class. And for whatever reason, they thought fall break, they got to go home. So a few of them were quite surprised that we, you know, we were doing double days on Thursday, Friday and, and Saturday. So, it, you know, it was kind of an eye opener for them last week, but um I think I've toned it down as far as uh, how hard our conditioning has been compared to the past, compared to the, the past years um, in the sense that we don't run as much just because I don't know, you know, I, I think running makes you tougher, but at the end of the day, I don't know. Our guys are in really good shape. If you watch them drill, you watch them work out, you watch, you know, their lifestyle I think is much better than it has been in the past. So I don't need to do as much of the, the grinding part, but we're still in the restroom quite a bit teaching as much as we can. I think, I don't know how much other schools teach, but I think we teach a lot of, we get in a lot of situations. We put kids in a lot of situations. We teach a lot. Danny and Malik do a great job with it. And like I said, we're just in the part of the season where we're trying to teach them as much as we can along with get them as much workouts as they can as far as wrestling. And also on the same sense, trying to keep them healthy and fresh for the long brutal season that college wrestling is. So Jake, you're in your sixth year, right? because yep. of covid right yep so you got a sixth year jacob cover you're in your fifth year right yep okay jake you've been here for the longest time so how <laughs> much has it changed from what jimmy just said how much of the practices changed from 
first year to sixth year for you? Uh, it's definitely changed a good bit. Yeah, we don't we don't grind as much. We've uh, like my freshman year was definitely the hottest year of conditioning in terms of preseason training. What made uh, it so hard? There were a lot of like really grinding workouts. They, they were all pretty tough, but like there's like a few that just really stick out. Where I'm like, there's no way we'd ever do that again. <laughs> Is there a least favorite? Yeah, yeah, but even so, like. You know, preseason's always gonna be tough. I kind of like the uh, the unpredictability of never knowing you get be doing keeps everything fresh. But yeah, it's yeah. Definitely, definitely been changing. Okay. So Jacob, you are probably twice Jake's size, right? He's yeah. one twenty five. Are you at least two fifty? Uh, I'm right about two forty. So two forty. Oh. So you're almost double his size. Yeah. It's obviously gonna be a lot different from you, especially for the running. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you notice a big difference from what and coach Andersey was talking about from not as hard of a grind now to how you grinded uh, five years ago? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely noticed a difference. I think um, in the workouts that I see now, maybe a little bit more purposeful behind them, they take into account like the days prior and things like that. And um, we still have those grind days. Like, I don't know how they were compared to Ferry's freshman year from what I've heard, not, not as comparable, but I mean, we still have those grind days because that is kind of an understanding that sometimes you just need to put your head down and learn how to do the work. So I think that there's a good balance of it this year. Do you guys still uh, run the hill on the front of campus? Yep. Yep, we still do that hill. Yeah, I thought you made it easy on him. Why would you make him run that hill? We've only done it once, so we're usually in the past, we do it three, two, three times, maybe four times. So I think the key word he said was purposeful. And, and I think there's a purpose for our workouts now where, you know, maybe back in the day, it was just me and Matt, you know, what, you know, trying to put kids through things that to see if we had the right kids where I really believe that we have the right kids. And we kind of gotten rid of the, the workouts and say, all right, do we have the right kids with us now? Um, I think that through the process of how we recruit now compared to then we we've kind of gotten rid of a lot of guys that we didn't think fit the way we, or fit the program and the way we wanted it to go. So, I think, like I said, the key word for me is purposeful. And, and that makes a lot of sense. And I think that, you know, usually there's a purpose of why we're doing something and the days we do it. Jim, when you guys started with your culture change, obviously this is like your 20, your 20 plus years into this as a coach. And then as a head coach, I think your interim year was like 04, 05, right? Yep. So we're going on like, you've been on the staff for over 20 years as a head coach, almost 20 years. Uh, when you had to do that culture change, is this what you wanted? Are these the two guys right here on the other part of the screens? Are these the guys that you wanted? Did they live how you wanted to live? 100%. And like I said, back then, when you're talking about 04 or 05, we were having practices at like 11 o'clock at night. We were going from 11 to, to 1 because I didn't want guys going out. So if I knew who they were at that time, they were in the wrestling room. They couldn't be out. So that was part of it. So we've changed. We've gotten away from that. You recruit kids like Jake and Jacob and uh, – you don't have to worry about that as much. In fact, I literally, I don't want to say I begged both these guys to come back because I don't think there was a whole lot of begging going on, but there was, there were some conversations where I don't think, you know, and they can talk better on this. I don't think they planned on being here right now, maybe a year ago at this time. And, and through a lot of conversation, we just talked about it. And what was the purpose of coming back for both of them? One of them was to get a master's. Well, both of them were to get a master's degree, but Jacob Cover needed a master. Not he didn't need a master's degree to teach, but, he was going to have to do it anyways at some point. So why not do it now, wrestle, and, and we'll do everything that, you know, everything we can to help him do it. And for Jacob Ferry, uh, you know, we talked about his legacy. And as far as I, I, I said, I don't, I, I think that I'm, what I'm saying here is correct is that he comes from a, he's a first generation college student. So he's going to go home and he's going to have a master's degree and he'll be, you know, he'll not only be the first in his family to have a degree, but also to have a master's degree, which I'm that same person in my family. So I think it's a pretty, big thing that, that my kids can look at at least. So I think Jake, like I said, you talk about legacy. Our, our AD talks about legacy all the time. And with Jake, I think that was a big part of our talk as far as, all right, you can get your master's degree in, in you know, five, 10 years and you have kids. This is what you can talk about. Not only do you get a degree, you also got a master's degree. So Jacob, you are in education, right? Yeah. Yep. Math education. What math? Yep. Oh, uh, you and my wife could have a lot of very interesting nerdy conversations about stuff <laughs> I don't care one bit about. That's yeah, math. But yeah. uh, <laughs> Jim, I'm glad I got you there. That was good. Yeah. But um, are you, Whitehall, is Whitehall still a, uh, 
is, uh, I guess, I don't want to say unhelpful, but is it still kind of a difficult thing to navigate? Is it still uh, hard to do the College of Education as a student athlete? Uh, um, I would say for me, I mean, as a student athlete, it's definitely busy. Like um, last year was my student teaching and I was always having to go into lifting right after practice or get practices in at different times. So that was pretty hard. But um, luckily I had a great lead teacher and I had um, great professors at Whitehall that really helped me out with that. So for me, it, it, was, it went pretty smoothly. As, I think as smooth as it can go in terms of uh, the busyness with student teaching, so. Are you seven through 12? Is that your license? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so seven through 12. My wife and I are both seven through 12. I'm comprehensive, so I'm social yeah. studies and I just added another certificate. Drew Kent State, Drew Kent State. Nice. The sweatshirt's getting old, Jim, just letting you know. I'm starting to think <laughs> you gotta get a new one. But um, yeah, getting, getting through student teaching. Do they only still allow student teaching, Jacob, in the springtime for the secondary people? That's what I had to do. Yeah. So my, uh, I did observation hours in the fall and, um, practicum is what it used to be called. Yeah. Yep. That's what it was. And then, um, and then in the spring is when I had to do my student teaching. So yes, that's how. Yeah. So they, they still do that. That's just how it's set up. My wife had to do the same thing. So yeah. Yeah. Jake Barry, what are you going to be when you grow up? Uh, after this year, I'm going to start fighting MMA. You're okay. But hold on, hold on. You didn't go to wrestle with Jim to get a degree in face punching. What is your degree? What is your undergrad in? What is your grad degree going to be? In? My undergrad was exercise science uh, specialist. And now my, um, my master's in sport administration, same as Jake. Okay. So, okay. So Jacob, yours, your master's is going to be sports administration. Yep. Yep. So undergrad in math nerdery, seven <laughs> through 12, and then sports management for both of you. Right. Yep. Yeah. So the, can you be an athletic director with that? What do you get with that sports management degree? Like what, yeah, what so job? I'm, I'm pretty sure I could be an athletic director with that. It'll help with other leadership positions, but I know for some of them are, I'm pretty sure for some of them like with principal and superintendent, you need a further education and a further certificate, but I think athletic director I could do with that. Jim, you have that, don't you? Yeah, yes. But for the, to be an athletic director, you probably need to get a, um, uh, administration administration certificate so you have to be teaching for five years in, in the state of ohio usually to get that no two now two now okay two. Um, most, you only got most teach two of, years in ohio to get that to be an administrator well okay. in pa you know for the most part most of the ad's in pa you don't even need to teach so it, it, we're different than a lot of states um so it's i think i think both those guys kind of picked it we got we have malik getting his master's in the same thing we have uh, v, which is our one of our, our graduate assistant, he's getting his master's. We got and Cody Camaras. We got five guys on our team, all trying to work, are all working on their masters right now in 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 that same field. So it's kind of you get to hear the stories of them in the classes and the, and the things that I, I took all those classes. So it's interesting. Jake Ferry just took a drink of water of a jug bigger than himself. I haven't <laughs> seen that. That's a new one for me. No, so no, I appreciate no. that. I appreciate that. It was almost like a circus trick. It's like the size of him. <laughs> down the water hey have you gotten any bigger uh jake as a 125 punter do you feel like you're as big as you've ever been for all six years that you've done 125 i've been like the same for the past three years i came in very undersized but i walk around 33 34 heaviest i've ever seen is like 36 37 like i don't blow up i uh, pretty much stay pretty pretty steady so if people watch this they're gonna be like why is this guy talk so much different than the other three guys <laughs> Why do you talk so much different? What's up with the accent? I'm from Boston. <laughs> You're from Boston. Listen, I went to a Patriots game on Sunday with the Browns. <laughs> and the Patriot fans and the Browns fans went into a very interesting chorus where they joined forces and they were using very colorful language. <laughs> To talk about what they wanted the Yankees, how they felt about the Yankees. <laughs> and my six year old yeah. kid's like, hey, dad, what are they saying? I'm like, something you don't get to say, but it's kind of true. You love to see that kind of unity, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, I, I enjoyed the unity. What I didn't enjoy was <laughs> Bill Belichick is like, this is like a free win every time I come to Cleveland. These guys are so stupid. <laughs> you can't even hand the ball off to the two best, two of the best running backs in the NFL. We're going to have some backup quarterback throw it. So you got us. I'll give you that. You're a better franchise. We all know that. 
Jim's a Dallas Cowboy fan. I don't even know what to say. To him. I'm a I'm a big Browns fan too. I just you know he grew up in the '80s when the, the Cowboys were were very very good. But in the same note, I was at the baseball game on Sunday night. I had to sit through that. They lost, and then last night was uh, or yesterday was just as bad. So um, oh, brutal, um, brutal. It is. It was brutal. We've had more hits than, than the Yankees in all the games, and we lost. You know, we lost them still. So it's unbelievable. Been brutal. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. I felt the sentiments of the Patriot fans and the Browns fans coming together and what they were saying about the Yankees. I felt it, but I had to be a good example. Um, <laughs> I did walk my kid through the Muni lot. I must tell you guys that. And he's six and he's pretty intelligent. And he was like, he was looking around. There's people throwing footballs. There's people on top of campers, on top of buses. There's a, uh, there's a DJ over here playing the Here We Go Brownies rap song. There's a country line dance party going on over here. Corn, we're walking, we're weaving in and out of cornhole games. It's There's trash everywhere. And I was like, what do you think, buddy? And he's like, he couldn't articulate into words what he saw. <laughs> he like, couldn't speak it. And he's like, why did we park so far away? I said, because I wanted to say $40. That's why. And I wanted you to get the gift of the muni lot that keeps giving so it was interesting cover cover what are you a Bengals fan what are you you're a columbus guy what are you nah i don't i'm i'm more of a college football guy i don't really watch the nfl that much so i'm more of a college football guy nothing no nah, i mean i would consider myself a browns fan i guess just based off of i guess region but i don't know kind of hard to root he came from columbus yeah, i know he he's columbus, in no man's so. land he's in like uh, you know, Buckeye Nation is where yeah, he's but, at. Yeah, but not, okay. not Cincinnati. Okay, okay. I don't know what to say. I mean, I've never met a non-Midwesterner, non-NFL fan. I can see if it's someone out west and they're climbing mountains doing hippie stuff, but <laughs> I guess I'll allow it. So, are you a Buckeyes every Saturday then? Yeah, I am a Buckeye fan. Grew up going to the games with my dad, so that's what, I think that's why I don't really watch NFL as much as the the college football. Well, if you want the sensation of me kicking you in the midsection every Sunday, just become a Browns fan. Okay. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. It's so terrible. Listen, we were in the dog pound. We got to watch the whole warm up. My kid thinks Cade York's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, the kicker for the Browns. Um, he's from LSU and we were there and everybody's they're drunk. They're vaping or MFing. They're the colorful chants about the Yankees. And at halftime, we went and we met up with uh, two guys I wrestled with, the gym coach, the Lensmans, Mark and Chad Lensman, good guys. Uh, Chad Lensman's the superintendent for Graham, for St. Paris Graham. Good guys. But anyhow, both wrestled for Coach Jordan. And uh, I think they'd been there and they'd been off at it for a while. And I was like, oh, man, it's like just after halftime. And I looked back, and we were down by three scores. And my kid was like, Dad, do we got to go back to the seats? <laughs> I, I was like. If the six-year-olds figured out these guys are this bad, I can't hold them to it. So we just walked back, and the, the Muni lot was a, a ghost town. And he's like, where'd all the people go, Dad? And I'm like, they're in the stadium watching the game, buddy. Uh, they're in the stadium watching that abomination of a game. Ferry's over here loving it. Ferry's like, yeah, yeah, go Boston. Yeah, Didn't go back. Didn't have to. I mean, it's terrible. Dude, it's brutal to watch. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just – it's hard. But – um. Yeah, I, I, I just, I got to, the longest 10 years of my life was the two seasons I was a bronze season ticket holder. That's all I'll say about it. That's all I'll say about it, Jim. Um, where can we expect to see these two guys go first in Kent State singles, Jim? Uh, Appy State. App State. App State. That's going to be a good run for you, Jake. Uh, App State's got a really good 25-pounder. He beat uh, was it? He beat the Minnesota guy last year. He, at Jake, the was, Jake was beating him six to two last Caleb year. Caleb Smith, right? Caleb Smith, Jake. Yeah, I think I took him down twice, and I got uh, I got pinned in a scramble or something pinned like in that. In a scramble, and yeah, does well, Arizona yeah. State go to that gym? Yeah, last year they were there too. And yeah, he wrestled the Arizona State guy really, really tough. Courtney, he's really yep. tough. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's a it's loaded that start for you, Jay. Again. The Courtney's back at 25. No, I'm asking you, is he? I if he is, he's gonna be a load, man. I mean, yeah, he was big last year. 
he's back. I mean, that guy is so explosive. I was watching him wrestle somebody that was really like a grinder and the guy's real good from space, but coming out of the gate, Jake, that's a really good challenge for you with Arizona state there. Obviously app state there. There's a couple other teams that are really good. Are you excited coming out of the gate? this year? Who's not there? Arizona State's not there this year, but Stanford is. Stanford, okay. Coming out of the gate against those guys, you know, West Coast yep. guys, they're going to wrestle you differently. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, I mean, I believe I can beat anybody. I'm excited. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I, think I just got to get rolling, you know, get moving. Yeah, I'm feeling like everything's really coming together right now. I'm excited. Like I said, I believe I can beat anybody. Jacob. Maybe- Jacob, when you start this fifth year, Jacob, do you have another year, by the way? Could he, Jim, could he get another year? I, technically, he could if he, if, if he decided to get another master's degree, but he'll, he'll have a master's degree in a year. So I think, like I said, he's been offered jobs. He's been, I'll let, I'll let Jacob talk, but he, I, he's not, not that he's ready to be done with college. I think he's really looking forward to this year, but in the same sense, he had been offered some jobs, he, you know, where he, where he student taught, he'd been offered a job. Um, he'll have his master's degree up this year. I think that he'll be ready just to get on with his life. And his, his uh, girlfriend from a long time now has, has been offered or has a job, just took a job. So they, they think they, they kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel as far as growing up and just, you know, getting a job and doing the, the job thing like me and you are doing, Zeb. Well, I can't wait to hear Jacob tell me his side of the story. <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> what are you going to do if you can come back for another year when do you assess that you do or don't do that? Um, well, I mean, if you would have told me if I go back a little bit during my fourth year uh, that I was going to come back for a fifth year, right at the beginning, I would have told you no, uh, I'm not. And then, you know, like uh, Jimmy talked about, we had those conversations and decided that it was best for me. So right now I would say that I'm not coming back for my sixth year, and I'm <laughs> like just as sure as I was of the fourth year, you know. But you never know. Jimmy works his magic. But like he said, um, I am ready to move on and, you know, got some plans further down the road. But I'm not ready to move on yet. You know, I'm excited for this year. I'm super pumped. I think we got a great, great team this year. Excited for the guys that we were able to get back. When you go to to App State to start out the year, um, you know, 240, most of the heavyweights aren't massive anymore. A lot of them, you're like what the typical heavyweight basically is, right? Yeah. Um, are you excited to get on the mat for the first time or the knees creaking Do the shoulders hurt? Are you pumped to get out there and start the season? Uh, no, I'm feeling good. I'm so I'm, I'm excited to get out there. Got uh, some, some game plan attacks to go out there and I'm excited to start the season. Where did you get your first job offer at? If you don't mind me asking. Um, so I, during my student teaching, they uh, asked me to uh, do an interview for a job offer there. And uh, I told them that I couldn't take it because I knew then that I was coming back for my uh, fifth year, but asked them if I could still do the interview and got to talk to some people there. So um, that's at Kent. I did my uh, student teaching at Kent. Uh, at Roosevelt? I did it at Stanton, so the middle school. But the Stanton, job okay. was, yeah, the job was at Roosevelt, though. I did some observations there and then um, I'll be looking back towards Columbus as well, back from where I'm from and see uh, jobs down there. So, yeah. Where's your girlfriend from? She's from Columbus as well. Yeah. Okay. So Columbus makes sense. Yeah. Wow. So here, I I do have advice for you, Jacob. Okay. If Jimmy tries to bring you back for another year, because it's really hard to recruit big guys. He talks about it all the time, right, Jim? It's a crapshoot, right? Is, but we, we've got a few in our room now, though. So Okay. Have you ever seen Jerry Maguire, Jacob? No. You haven't? Yeah, we're old. Jim and I are old. But here's here's your line. You ready? Uh-huh. Jim's like, hey, come back for another year. All you do, watch a scene from that movie with Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr. Okay. Show me the money! Show <laughs> me the money, big Jim! Yeah. Show me the money! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have heard that one. <laughs> Show me the money. Hey, you want to oh. keep getting me degrees? I'll do it. I'll do what you yeah. need me to do. Yeah, we've are, we've already spent there. Both these guys' money for next year. So <laughs> it's uh, the, the money shown is over for these guys. <laughs> okay, Jim, <laughs> weren't you allowed to do something creative with guys like this? Could you um fundraise uh money for COVID guys who held over? Could you do that, or how did that work? I forget. Well. You could actually have more than 9.9 scholarships, but <laughs> there's a funny story here. So uh, Ian Miller was talking to, to Danny Mitchup, Coach Mitchup, your, your, your nephew was coaching 
talking to Danny at the convention. Uh, the word was that they fundraised for NLI for the 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 all returning all American because you know he had some offers to go other places. Danny called me up and said, "We got to start doing that for some of our you know some of our really good recruits we have." And I looked at Danny dead, dead in the eyes and I go, "The day I start re- recruit or fundraising for NLI money is the day I retire and go find another job because I do a lot of we do a lot of fundraising at Kent State for our budget." I couldn't even imagine trying to fundraise for NLIs. Now I know that Clarion, I know that Appy State had to do it. I know Clarion's been doing it. I know other schools are. I just know how much effort we put in and how much time goes involved for asking people for money for our program. Now if someone wants me to go out and ask for money for an individual so he can make more than a, an assistant coach, not going to happen. Now, I'm not. I'm not going to be around when that when that day comes at Kent State. I can guarantee you that. Well, Jim, I'm looking at the clock here. Yeah. It's getting cl- pretty close, man. It might be. It might be sooner than you think. I'm just putting it out there. When coach, when coaches start fundraising, when they're told to start fundraising for NLI, that's when I think my days will be very limited. To be honest with you, I, I don't see myself ever. Like I said, and I, Ian was a little bit frustrated. And like I said, I don't know if you, you care that I say this or not, but Ian was pretty frustrated because an assistant coach is going to be making more, or a wrestler going to school, getting a degree, is going to be making more money than than a coach. And I think there's some, I know, you know, I know what happens in football. I don't baseball. think that that's the exact situation at App State, but I know what you're saying. Like at some of these other places, that's probably the case. Yeah. I, as, as, if, if I'm speaking like from experience, from what I know. I'm, I'm guessing it's not down there, but there, you know, that's happening. Obviously other places where they got to, got to pay. I do got to speak up for Ian. Cause I do know kind of what their situation is. I don't think a student athletes making more than the coach, to be honest with you. Um, okay. But, but, that's I, but good. I, I, that, you know what I mean? I could see the frustration yep. if that were the situation at app state for him, but I don't think that is, but I know that it is the situation in some other places. So. But back yeah. to Jake's point. Jake, he wants you to come back for another year. Go watch Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. All right? I'm just go right. show you the money. Uh, you guys are wild vets. You know, you're grizzled. You're seasoned. You've been in it at a while, in a while. Both of you probably had some pretty good injuries, wear and tear in the body. What do you say to a younger kid, Jake Ferry? What do you say to a true freshman who's full of spring in his step? And, you know, just has a lot of go juice right now. And they want to get after it in October. What do you say to them? Because this season's so long and grueling. What's your advice to a young kid? I, I tell them to them all the time. Like, you know, younger you get away with that. It took me a few years to realize how important recovery is. Like, going to college, everything I knew was go, go, go. And I didn't know how to, like, slow down, do the right things to recover. Cause, you know, you get away with that when you're younger. But, you know, now all the time in the training room, damn near every day, taking ice baths. I do yoga all the time. I'm always telling younger guys, like, take care of your body now. It's going to catch up to you later on. Like, by the time you're, you know, you're in your third year. So third year is when I started hitting me. I started feeling, uh, started feeling like, like hip pain and stuff. I'm like, I can't let this happen this early. I started, that's why I started, like, really doing yoga and really stress and recovery and you know, I feel pretty great right now. I've been very fortunate in terms of, uh, you know, durability throughout my career and, you know, looking to keep it that way. So, yeah, that's why I tell the younger guys, you're like, do what you can to take care of your body now and stay as healthy as possible, you know, because it will, it will catch up. Big Jake, what's your advice to kids on being a leader, doing the right things and being a role model to them? What's your advice to them? You know, he talks about recovery taking care of your body, but what's your advice for kids to do the right thing and be in a situation where Jimmy's paying for a master's degree, mm-hmm. maybe having a fundraise, maybe going Jerry Maguire, showing you the money. What would your advice be to the younger kids on that? Um, mine would just be uh, to stay focused and understand that it take time, takes time. Um, I've had this conversation with Jake actually a lot, um, especially when I was younger, I would get a little bit frustrated sometimes because um, you come out of high school and you you just get success because you would grind sometimes. You know, some guys are just able to put their head down and grind and they get success. Whereas in college, that sometimes doesn't happen. You have to have an intent when you're grinding and you have to have purpose behind what you're doing and you're drilling and things like that. You have to make mindful changes in your wrestling. So make sure that you 
are able to slow it down and make those mindful changes in your wrestling. And then I think if you lead by example, then it, it'll show in, your, in, in the years that you uh, wrestle at Kent. So. Okay. So now we've circled back around to the part where I want to talk about the Jake and Jake show. That's what matters. I mean, listen, on the Jake and Jake show, if my wife thinks it's funny, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny, right? Yeah. Whose idea was Jake and Jake? Talk to me. I don't care who wants to take the ball and run with it here, unlike the Browns can't do. But whose idea was it for you guys to get together? Your opposite, your bookends. One's a big, gigantic guy. One's a little guy from what we got a Midwesterner. We got a New Englander, right? We got two totally different guys. Whose idea was it? Where did it come from? Go. Uh, so I consider Koba like a top 25, top 30 friend of mine. So we got some pretty good, uh, pretty good chemistry. Um, <laughs> top 25. Okay. Yeah. Give or take. <laughs> um, yeah. Our social media was pretty bad. And especially now, yeah, we talked about how like, how important it would be for like for recruiting guys, like feeling like a, like guys like being recognized, like feeling a part of something, you know, it helps like, you know, helps that visibility. So we, you know, we complain about, we got a social media guy on the team who runs it and we used to just kind of harass him talking about how we got to do more. And we just kind of jotted down a bunch of different ideas and stuff we could do. And we're going to start implementing a lot more stuff. And our social media guy, Caniglia, he's been doing great and everything, you know, helping with ideas and yeah we just kind of been getting the ball rolling we done a lot of question of the week jake and jake show but we're doing a lot more like you said the uh, guys drawn we got trivia coming up and we got like just a lot more ideas in the work i love it big jake whose idea was the microphone <laughs> that's not a microphone so, so that was my idea i went to walmart and uh i was looking at the toy microphones and just got ended up getting a real one and painting it so I don't know. I just thought it would be kind of funny. Um, when I was in uh, when I was in high school, we had a guy who would go around and do interviews and post them online for our wrestling team. And he used to use, he, I think in one of my interviews, he used a trophy as a microphone. So I kind of like that too. We might have to do that. But um, that's kind of where I got the idea for the microphone from. Jimmy, I'm going to hand you a wooden spoon next time you and I do an interview and you got to talk to a wooden spoon like Bob Parker. Yeah. There we, yeah. I have a, I have a, one of those big uh, dog toys. that looks like it's a microphone, but it's a dog toy and it's a little squeaky in it. I should bring that in and, and you know, do a little cameo for them guys and, and use great. that one. So there we go. Dude, didn't the athletic director do one of them? Did you have him do the, the golden flash noise? Your actual head athletic director did <laughs> one of them. What one did he do? Yeah, he did, the, he did the noise. What sound would a golden flash make? Caca was the big noise I heard. Everybody kept saying nope. caca. Nobody got to hear anybody else, so nobody even was parroting each other. They just didn't know what to say, right? Yeah. I love it. And draw yeah. the golden flash. Those were pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do any better, better though. From memory. Oh, yeah. those are bad, man. Jimmy, I believe Malik was the one who got saved from the wrestling room. <laughs> you were left to burn inside of it. How did you feel about that? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, they edited that. So, you know, they, they interviewed about – about all 40 people and it was like 28 me and then the rest of them were the rest of the guys. they made it look like it was Malik or whoever you know so don't let them fool you i know i know i know who these, who these guys would save that, that's that is that real is that real is that real <laughs> no comment <Is> real <laughs> yes you got 28 miles has got you back yeah, my guy. That's all that matters. Yeah, I go. was joking. I was joking. Uh, okay, I was gonna. I say did come up with. I did come up with the question, though. I gave him yeah, that question. Yeah. Malik won, didn't he? I, I think so. Yeah, yeah Malik got yeah. five. Yeah, I believe one by one. Yeah, Jimmy had he, four. He got minus one with um, was it Johnson? Yeah, Johnson said we did subtract yeah. one. We should have subtracted one from him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When it gets into the grind, are you guys going to still be able to do Jake and Jake when you're not feeling so well? You're maybe cutting a little bit of weight, little Jake. You know, sometimes you got to do that when you weigh 30. You got to get down to 25 the night before. Are you going to be able to do this and maintain it in season? Will we see more of it in season? I think we probably won't do it as much. You know, take a take a little, little bit off the social media stuff, a little more focus on wrestling. But we'll still definitely be doing stuff, keeping the social media active. 
hopefully relying on some other guys to be doing things too. Yeah, I think that'll be big. Kind of rely on some of the uh, some of the guys who maybe are just going to opens and stuff like that. And then hopefully, if we can do that, then they can take it over for next year as well, yeah. so that we can keep this up for next year. Jacob, you grew up obviously with Ohio State in your backyard. Uh, obviously, the Ohio State is just like what they do for their social media is incredible. Coach Ryan does a great job. Um, they do a weekly thing. You know, we're trying to kind of emulate what they do. But they got professional shooters, a whole team of editors, right? And you grew up seeing that. Mm -hmm. When you come to Kent State, are you like, well, we're not that. But let's at least have fun with it and show people what Kent State is. Is that kind of where your thought process is with it? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, I've, I've had a great time doing it. We get so many laughs recording these things. And because we don't, most of the time when we ask the questions, we don't tell anybody what the questions are either because we want to get their honest response. So when we were doing the golden flash one, we were just cracking up, listening to some of the athletes, you know, give their, give their golden flash sounds. So, I mean, we don't have the same resources as, as some of the bigger schools, but I think we have a great time working on it and doing it together. So. That's fun. Yeah. Jake what? Berry, can I get I your know. golden flash? Can I get your golden flash? Um, I say something like. God. Feel a little lightning in that bird, you know? <laughs> Jacob, let's get your golden flash. Ah, yeah, all right. Caca! <laughs> Jim, did you say caca? That was your yeah, too. I did, I did caca. But yeah. can I say something yeah. else? I think, so one of the things that, about this is they don't, no one knows it's coming. So the other day we were, we were going into the locker room and they were just stopping guys. So guys were coming into practice and they, they were just literally in the hallway to the locker room stopping guys and asking them questions so when they say it's real it's it's like they're literally stopping them asking them questions and then sending them in the locker room so no one knows what's happening it's all pretty much impromptu things which makes in my opinion a lot more looks like they're having fun with it and I hope it's something that regardless of how the season's going or what's going on they continue doing because the guys get a lot of laughs out of it there's always you know you always hear about it after while they're warming up they're talking about it so it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. It's been exciting. I think that, like I said, it's gotten to the point where our administrators have, have seen it and they really like it too. So, you know, we're, they're doing everything they can to, to promote our program. And like I said, it might not have a, a million dollar uh, or, or take a lot of money to, to do it, but it's, we're having a lot of fun and they're doing a great job with it. It's organic. I say it's organic. It's, it's genuine. It's organic. That's what I really like about it. Uh, Jimmy, throwback question for you. What well, one of your teammates wouldn't you have let date your sister? All of them back then. <laughs> there's one. I got one. I got one. Marty <laughs> Collins. Marty Collins would never date my sister. I wouldn't <laughs> let him date her. <laughs> so yeah, but back then it was it was so much different. Like you heard oh. stories back then. It's just the way it is then and now. You know, <laughs> it's. I'm just glad that I don't have to deal with that what i dealt with what was going on back then now that's for sure the big line i hear with people is if we'd have had these phones 25 30 years ago we none of us would be doing the jobs we're doing i hear that one a lot i hear actually yeah. like literally i hear people that i know all the time like we'd have had these cell phones then we'd all be screwed and i'm like well i mean we're not morons and you kind of like figure things out and yeah you adapt out, yeah you adapt exactly adapt uh, change yeah you have to i mean that's the biggest thing the other day, one of you hit me up. It was, I believe, little Jake. He's like, hey, we doing this now? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm at my job. I'm a teacher. I have like a real job. And then he was like, well, Jimmy said we were going to do it. And I'm like, I'm literally at the job that Jimmy <laughs> helped me get. <laughs> but he pretty much forgot about that. Jim forgot about that. It slipped his mind. What happened? I, gave, I told you what time, Jake. You said, said it was Monday at 9, 9 a.m. Nice no, Monday at 9 p.m. Help me out here. Anti Meridian, thought, post Meridian, gold jacket, green jacket, who cares? Yeah, I thought it was in the morning too, but I mean, I, Jim, you, you obviously he, said AM to him, buddy. Come on. Well, sometimes we forget that people have jobs though, too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> jobs that you helped them get. You have a free period, don't you? AM, PM. Sorry, yeah. right. we, we jacket, figured green it out. Jacket, same thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Hey, then, uh, we, then we had to postpone it twice because of the Indians. We can't, we, you know, couldn't miss the Indians. Right. We postponed it. 
That's right. We had to. Uh, Jacob Cover, uh, did you have to take the Praxis 2 test? Um, so, yeah, I had to take one, one of the Praxis tests. Yeah. Um, and then I had to take my teaching licensure test. But one of the Praxis is I did not have to take because I was able so to. One, I'm guessing one, you did, two you had to take. Yeah. Yep, I had did to take. pass it the first time? Yes, I did. Yeah. So it took me like I, five times to pass it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can I say something, Zeb? Yeah, of course you're gonna. I can't stop you. <laughs> so so uh, we, have a, we have a graduation ceremony for all graduating seniors uh, of all athletes. So last year when, when Jacob um, graduated from his first undergraduate, they had him, he was the, the, the speaker there because he, was, he had the best overall grade point average. So when he got up there and, you know, I think that sometimes I even, you know, I'm like, oh man, he's a wrestler. What's he going to say up there? I was totally impressed by how well he spoke, how well he did everything. And at some point, like, I'm like, man, you did a good job. You, you're a great public speaker. And I'm like, all right, well, he's going to be a teacher. He's good at this. So then I'm like, so what's your grade point average anyways? And found out that he had one, it was either an A minus or a B plus. I don't know which one you can ask him that everything else in his college career were all A's. But I, I can't come to find that his, his one grade that he didn't get the A in was communication class, which at Kent State, it's the easiest class you could possibly <laughs> take. So it, it's kind of ironic that he's a, he, he missed his 4.0 in, high, in college because of a communication class when he's probably one of the best public speakers I've ever had on our team <laughs> at, at this age. So it's kind of it's, it's actually pretty funny to me. Jacob, I think I can hear your teeth grinding right now, man. I think I can hear the grit just in there. You're not – Jim had to bring up a sore subject. Hey, I failed the teaching test like four or five times. How – listen, what was your GPA coming into Kent State? What were your ACT, SAT? Why – I ask my wife this all the time. I ask Mark Lensman this all the time. I ask all these genius people like me who went to Kent State. Mm -hmm. Why did you go to Kent State? What, what was your GPA in high school? What were your like ACT, SAT? Uh, I don't know. My GPA was probably, it was a little bit over a four point. And then okay. uh, ACT was a uh, 27. So you could have probably gotten into one of the Ivy League schools with that. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm saying, no, with the wrestling maybe. slot, you probably could have. Yeah, maybe. If yeah. they were recruited you and needed a heavyweight, mm -hmm. like they have opportunities, they have like eight slots, each one of them, it's all different. You probably could have gone to those. Why not go to a Case Western? Why not go to NYU or one of these other places where you probably could have got in with that Why Kent State? Um, well, I at first I visited Kent State and I was like, no way, because both my parents went here. And I was like, I don't want to go to the school that both my parents went to. But then, you know, I started thinking about it. I went there again. And, you know, just seeing the campus, I love the campus. It's so pretty and the downtown area is very nice. So. I mean, I love to be outside, so seeing all the green space on campus and then also just meeting some of the guys. I mean, Ferry used his uh, recruiting trick on me and it worked. So, you know, he can, he can tell you about that one. It's, uh, it's kind of funny, but um, yeah, just overall, I think it's very well-rounded. You can find whatever you want to do here at Kent. And it is great education school, Zeb, you know that. I have, my wife and I have degrees from there, Jim. That's why we have the jobs we have. Yes, we know that. All right, well, we are aware. You make it sound like, you know, for education, you're better off going to a Kent than an Ivy League. You're going to pay all that money. You're going to end up with an education degree. You might as well go to Kent. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm a product of it, but I got to, I got to like be, I got to be like devil's advocate here, Jim. I can't okay. just be, be swinging from KSU's backpacks, man. Come on. Which all I need right. a new one, by the way. I need a new one, by the way. I'm just putting it out. Hey, Jake, why Kent State? You're an East Coast guy. You're a Boston guy. Why Kent State for you, Jake Ferry? Um, I actually went to a tech school. so. Uh, tech schools back home a little different you know like I went as a freshman completely separate from my public school so I went to school to be a plumber after doing that for a little bit I realized that I'd rather blow my brains out than be stuck doing that I started really liking wrestling and I figured I want to go to college and wrestle um I figured it'd be nice to get away from home not much not really any D1 wrestling at home anyways you know other than Ivy League I was about to do that and uh, so, yeah, I ended up actually having the worst visit of all time at Kent. <laughs> it was a very short notice. Um, I think Coach Hill called my club coach who wrestled at Edinburgh with him and said, we don't have 
we need little guys, you know, we're struggling with that. So they sent me there, you know, got a call from him next week. I was like, Ken, it was over Christmas break. I got stuck in the Atlanta airport for 12 hours because of a delay out of Boston in the morning. So I got to Kent around midnight, you know, um, they extended the trip a little bit. You know, I, uh, I was drawn in by the squirrels. I saw a squirrel, like <laughs> first time a black squirrel. And I was like, my jaw dropped. And I think, you know, Jimmy knew that moment that he did not have to offer me much money. <laughs> I was enamored by the squirrels. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, they, they gave me the best opportunity. I kind of, I thought I was going to go to Air Force Academy before that, actually. Really? Nah, yeah, I kind of, kind of got screwed there. Hey, Kent State's benefit, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah with, with Air Force, like, they, they coach flew my house. They flew me out there. I kind of fell in love with school. And I, I did, like, everything to get in. They said I was going to be fine, blue chip me, whatever. And then towards the end, after I did, like, the whole process, like, there's a lot of things you got to do. You know, it was pretty much good. Uh, they said, like, oh, he can't get you in because you're not allergy. Very mild, not allergy. I told them about it. So they get me waivers. So after that, I'm like, it was kind of late. You know, this was already, like, you know, September of my senior year. And then I think around December, January is when I got that call from Kent and ended up visiting and uh, liked it there and took the opportunity. And here we are. You started out as a vocational education person who was yep. going to go right into the workforce. Yeah. Now you're going to leave. Listen, your whole journey's crazy to me because you're this, you're an East coast guy. I'm going to have to get like captions for this. If people are watching it to understand what you're saying, the Midwesterners at least who listen to it, but you, you were going to be a plumber. You didn't like it. You realized that it was just not going to be for you. You're going to leave Kent state with a graduate degree in sports management and then you're going to go punch people in the face for a living? I'm, I'm like, confused. That's the plan. You know, you could have just been a plumber and punched people in the face. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'm out here chasing the dream, wrestling. I love wrestling. I love being able to train. Uh, I was able to get away from home, experience a new place, meet some incredible people. You know, couldn't be happier with how everything's been going. Jake, you've made the NCAs two years. You made the COVID year. One year. One, One year. year. You made the COVID. You wrestled Barnett, right? Yeah. I remember you took him down. Yeah. You had me fired up. I was like, yeah, he's in this match. And that guy's massive, right? Yeah. I, I got a, him, so. Dude, he's huge. I think you took him down twice, didn't you? I, I think only once. You took him down once, but the dude's yeah, massive. I got ridden for yacht in that match. Huge guy though, right? Big gigantic guy. Long, um, very it, long. You got to win that, that year, right? You got to win at the NCAAs that year. Yeah, I made the Doc Campbell kid. You, match before I was winning uh, the uh, Nebraska kid Cronin. I took him down twice, and then I uh, I I gassed out the therapy. Like I never gassed out before. I think the, the nerves got to me. I got thrown and pinned, and the, that was the heartbreak, and that was that was tough. I was wrestling really well that match too, but yeah. What, what do you take from your experience into the sixth year? You've been to the NCAA tournament. You know what it's like. It's a big arena. You didn't have a crowd that year though. It was real weird. There was only like maybe yeah. a couple hundred people in the crowd, maybe a thousand total. <laughs> but what do you take from that experience? Um, I think that that experience alone, like I said, I took down everyone I wrestled. Like was wrestling pretty well. Yeah, I it kind of further solidified. Like I know I could beat anybody. And last year, like, I had a couple of tough losses here and there that kind of took me out of everything. But nothing's changed. I still know I could beat anybody. I know I could definitely take anybody down. I could beat anybody on my feet. You know, I got a, some little things to work on. But I feel good right now. I'm ready to, to molly wop everybody. Molly wop. <laughs> listen, that, I like that. I like when you say molly wop because that's my language. I'm a lower level person. Um, <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Me, I'm right on that level. I'm right on the plumber level, just so you know. <laughs> I was raised by a union iron worker, okay? Uh, right on. A mouth breather. Uh, <laughs> Jacob Cover, question for you. I'm just going to blame you for this. Okay. Um, what happened to my grudge match trophy? <laughs> okay, that was not me. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, you're Mr. Genius. You're the good guy. Yeah, but I'm also the last match. I should not be placed in charge of these things. I don't know where they go. I'm, I'm – I'm still trying to catch my breath by the time we got the grudge match trophy. <laughs> Where did it go? 
it, it, it was with Avery and Pat and whatever. Oh, yeah. Correct, Jake? That's what I heard. When they, when, they, when they left the school, they took it with them, we heard. Is this confirmed? I need to know from these two young men over here. Is that confirmed? That, that's the word on the street. That is the word on the street. All right. Because Jim's got a lot of street cred out there. I don't want him to, like, lose any <laughs> on lies. Listen, either Blank's going to make another one. They got a new uh, – they got this, like, $60,000 water table, plasma table at Riverside. Mm -hmm. We're either going to make a new one or jo Joel actually texted me like a month ago. Hey, we're making a new trophy. We're going <laughs> to have you approve it. And I'm just like, just make the trophy and let your guys have it. Right, whatever. Write the, write the results on the back. Is all Zeb, how come, how, when that, t when that trophy came out, it was like, we had like a, like 14 matches in a row. I think we won and they were finally favorite in one. They came up with this grudge match idea and you went right along with it, man. It was it was typical Zeb on me. You, you pulled a, a typical Zeb, Zeb move on me right there. Like the liberal media. You know, I'm the liberal media, so I had to do it. I had to get one in there and dig at you, Jim. I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to dig on you. I was like, uh, went like CNN on you, Jim. Like you were a bad, like you were Jim Jordan, and I was CNN, and I had to do it. I, I, I felt good about it. Now, now, I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> glad you brought it up, Jim. Um, I can cross that one off my list right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all this, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Grudges Jim's hold, holds against me. Um, Jim, I love talking to these two guys. Do you have anything else for me that we can throw down on these two old, weathered college athletes? I think that these two guys, you know, sometimes you get these, and this is always the, the hard one is sometimes you want older guys coming back because it's so hard and because it's so hard in their bodies. And, you know, how much are they into it? And, and how good are they going to be later on in their careers? And with all three guys, when I say all three, with Cody, um, Kamara, Jake, and Jacob, I think their, rest, their, their best wrestling is still ahead of them, which I, I wouldn't have asked them if I didn't think it was, you know, if, if they didn't come back and, and be better than they were last year. Um, and like I said, a lot of times you look at older guys, you're like, man, is this, you know, do we want them here for another year? But there's no doubt that I think that uh, – every older guy we have on our team, because we're going to have about eight seniors or eight last year guys probably starting this year, or between seven and eight guys. I think every one of them is wrestling better now than they were last year. Um, most of these guys started their first year in that COVID year, and it was such a weird year. And then last year, it just took them some time to do it because it was a COVID year. So I think they're just, you know, all eight of them are used to what we're doing. They understand it. And having these two guys' leadership has, has made it so much easier for us as a coaching staff. And, you know, sometimes you, you wonder in, in wrestling how much, you know, how important it is to have leaders. And, and it, you know, it's an individual sport, but I'm, I'm firmly against that at this point in my career. And, and I believe that you need great people like these two guys to, to lead your team and to, to make you better. And I think, I think, you know, we're still going to have our struggles that we have with some of our guys because it, they are what they are. But I think the best wrestling for – all of our older guys is still in front of us, meaning this year. So I'm really excited about this, this upcoming year. Jake, what do you have else? Do you have any, you got any stories for me? Anything to, to wind this down? Either one of you, anything you guys want to share? Any Jimmy stories, travel <laughs> stories, anything Kent State you want to share before we sign off here on episode two of the Kent State Wrestling Talk? I bet you got something I've been meaning to ask you. Go over, do you have anything to say? I, I just want you to tell them about your recruiting trick <laughs> oh my recruiting trick yeah so the way I got over to commit was um <laughs> he was staying with me my freshman year in the dorms we had like a, a little market down at the bottom down the stairs with a, a smoothie stand and everything and I went up to the uh you know I was getting him a smoothie like good guy I am and I told the lady working you know behind the smoothie I said hey this guy is you know his big recruit right here and he said that if this is an above average smoothie he will commit on the spot and I put a lot of pressure on them. And I think they, uh, I think it's safe to say they delivered. <laughs> they delivered. I love yeah. it. You know, that'll get a heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Zeb, what I've been meaning to ask you is um, I was wondering if it's, if it's too late for you to press charge against Tim Rooney. <laughs> Tim Rooney. He's had, he's had it too you good for too me, long. Rascal. He's had it too good for too long. I think that you should press charge on him. Yeah, I think the statute of limitations ran out on that one. And we were we were talking about it. We think it's the perfect time because before he had nothing, and now he's a PA, and he's got he's he's got stuff to lose now. It'd be perfect. There's nothing I want more. 
Tim Rooney one, Miller's zero. <laughs> and, and I'll Got be the one who explains this. So Zeb Miller owns a house, if I'm if I'm correct. Oh, uh, oh, it's gone now. It's yeah. gone. And Tim All Rooney of them are gone. It. Tim Rooney lived in it. I know at one point he he like Jimmy snook a fly snook a fly your your mailbox maybe took it out. <laughs> no, that was that was uh yeah that was him. You're right. That was him. Yeah, yeah. On camera. committed a felony. Committed a felony against my mailbox. <laughs> correct. And that, you, know, you can't. It's, it's government government property. You can't do anything to it. And he he, he snook a flyed it. Took it yes. out. <laughs> Called me on that about four times. I'm like, dude, like, I'm like, this is back like Tim's probably sophomore year when Tim was about as irrelevant as any wrestler we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> he, weighed, he weighed about 170 pounds. Right? <laughs> that's why he could. That's why he could take out the mailbox. Uh, and like, what do you want me to do about it? Like, this, like, I don't know what to tell you. He's a, he's a strange kid. This is before he made a lot of changes in his life. So that's one thing. I think that's the only thing. Is or is there, or is there something more? He stole Ian's shoes. He stole the Kent State shoes with Miller on them. Okay. And he sold that. them on eBay. And then I saw him one day and I, 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 I on Instagram yeah. and I'm like, hey, those are my those are literally my shoes. And the guy's <laughs> like, I bought them from this guy. I don't think that one was Tim. Tim uh he had Hill shoes with the Kent State logo on it for a while. He didn't steal them initially, but they just end up he ended up having them. And then at Cal Canel's yeah. wedding last year, he like roundabout he got him. Yeah, yeah a couple right you know, flags. Like, he finally gave him back to Hill, and Hill was ecstatic. Listen, if you want the truth, who I really want, I can't wait to see Michael De Palma. He rode his motorcycle through uh, Herning Road. One of, uh, he, he rode his motorcycle. He had a little Honda scooter. He rode it through the house. <laughs> that's, his, that's his blood I want. I want to, listen, I'm going to hit through? Michael the Palma so hard, I'm going to have all this hair gel. I'm going to have so much hair gel on my arm from hitting him in that just greased back in that Pennsylvania Italian whatever he's got there. And one of my guys give, you, give your house uh, bed bugs? Uh, Jim. That's your that's your guy out and that's your that's your Dave Portnoy guy. He did that. Bauer, that's right. Bauer, you had to like fumigate the house. You, you lost money too. I had to tear the carpet out. I had to tear the padding out. And then um, he went over to Marrero's, and Ian was doing the the Xbox Live or whatever they're playing. And Bauer Bauer was just hanging out there, and he's like, "Yo, Zub just kicked me out of the house." <laughs> And which which is true. I took all of his stuff and I threw it in a pile in the driveway because it was infested with bed bugs the size of ladybugs. I have the pictures and videos to prove it. Oh wow. And then and he's so he's sitting over there and then they called me and they were like, Hey, what's going on with Bauer? And I'm like, He got bed bugs. He's been Charlie <laughs> Sheen and everybody. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? I go, he's taking naps in everybody's bed with his cat. And he's just spreading the bed bugs. And then he got like scabs everywhere. And he went to the doctor and he got medicine for the scabs. Rather than being like, what's causing the scabs? <laughs> I got called on guy. I got blamed on that one too. <laughs> That's brutal. My, my, uh, my freshman year, I stayed at the uh, Horning House. Yeah. It was uh... RIP. <laughs> yeah. That, place. that thing was falling over. <laughs> yep, it was it was good riddance. Jim, no more honing roads. <laughs> no more honing. Kilgore lived there and it was killing squirrels and making squirrels stew. Yeah. And hanging their tails above the garage. Like <laughs> above the garage, nailing their tails up here. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? Hey, he just had <laughs> another kid. Did you see that, Jim? No, he did, did he? And a baby girl. Another girl. Good for him. Yeah, just like you, Big Jim. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Hey, Big Jim, congratulations. Uh, Mary and one of the daughters just got engaged. Congratulations. My oldest, my oldest daughter got engaged in uh, Jacksonville, Florida last Saturday or Friday. Saturday. Was she born in March of 99 or April? March of 99. So we were down in the basement of the Max Center lifting after the NCAA tournament. And his his wife brought his daughter in, and she had the football head still. 
She's a big kid. She's a really big kid. Yeah, and, she, and their heads are soft, and yep. to pass through the birth canal, my kid, one of my kids had the football head, and I, we were all like, what's up with Jimmy's daughter's head? <laughs> <laughs> and he got so offended. But now I know. Now, I, he could have just been like, wait till, wait till you have a kid. You'll see. <laughs> ain't wrong. It was my first, wrong. I didn't know either. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with my kid's head? You know? <laughs> No, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was interesting, Jim. It was interesting. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And he would always like yell, yell crazy stuff at me. You think this is hard. Being a dad's way harder. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's actually very it's true. It's actually very true. Right, Jim? Given that these, them a, this is what, what they're doing is so much easier than what's about to come for these guys. And I think they know that. These two are smart enough to realize that they're going to enjoy this last uh, this last hurrah um, before the reality hits them. I think the reality got, of life. I got four and six year olds of reality laying upstairs right now that I'm going to go up and it ain't like how you know it's almost like uh, my roommate comes into my room every night and kicks me over to the side <laughs> of the bed and I'm like, why is my roommate kicking me in the ribs? And it's a four year old. <laughs> that's gonna be my son so it's a good time I actually I used to do that to jake when we lived together <laughs> <laughs> snuggle him like a kitten yeah if my Probably phone dies like i'm out my, i'm on very last i got bar barely anything left so if i die i'll, okay. I'll see you the next episode three <laughs> episode two is in the books guys thank you kent state wrestling talk coach Anderson, jacob cover jake ferry thank you for the time stick around guys thanks guys thank you Thank you.